Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Statistician Superhero Challenge, Topic 5, DQ1. We are going to start with the name game. Let's type our name in the blue cell. All right, and having done that, our data appears as if by magic, right? All right, now we're going to go and we're going to type in the improvement data that is in column F. And from our box of instructions, it says this is the difference in the water test data. Okay, so we're going to look at after the test and before whatever we did to it. Now we're going to try to find out and see if we made a difference. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. So the improvement data is, is there a difference from the treatment that was given to the water wells? All right, so we're going to type in equals. And then you're going to click on cell E18, or E4, rather, I'm sorry, minus, and I'm going to type in D4 because I'm not going to leave the screen, but you can just click on it, all right, and hit enter. All right, once you've done that, you can see that the formula is correct. And now, everybody, we're going to drop this down the rest of the way. I'm not going to retype the formula anymore. I'm going to use my Excel skills here to fill in this box. So as you watch the mouse, it goes up to the lower right-hand corner. The mouse changes, right, from a, a white, like a puffy plus sign to the black plus sign. When it does that, you can click it and drag down, left mouse click and drag down. Okay, just drag it all the way down. That way you don't have to type in any more formulas. You guys know this already, you know? I'm just preaching to the choir. All right, we've done that. Now, everybody, we're going to type in the formulas for the mean, median, standard deviation, and range. Now, remember, we only have to do this one time, and we can make this work very nicely. Okay, so the before, everybody, is in column D. All right, so we're going to calculate the statistics for the before, for the after, this is supposed to be after. You don't have to do this. This will be correct for you. All right. So we're going to do it on column D, column E, and column F. All right. So the mean is average. So we're going to type in equals A, B, E, R, A, G, E, average. Then we're going to type in D colon D colon D. Another way to do that is just to click on the cells, right? D4 to D120 or whatever it is down to the end. All right, hit enter. And we have our mean is 29.72. Let's do the same thing with the median equals median, open parentheses, and that is D colon D, or you can also select the cells themselves if you choose to do so. All right, the standard deviation. Now notice up here it says you can use the stedev.s, that's the sample, or the stdev, whichever one you want, okay? So equals stdev.s. I'll use that one for the sample, and that again is D colon D. All right, hit enter. Now, the range is not a pre-built formula. You can't type in range, but what you can do is type in max minus min, okay? Max minus min. So equals max, and then D colon D minus min, all right? D colon D. And once you've done that, you'll have your formulas all filled in. Now, this is just between you and me, okay? For those of you who watch the video, I don't have to type these formulas anymore. I can copy them and shift them to the right for the after improvement. Why? Because I want my cells to go from column D to column E to column F. I want them to shift to the right. So as I copy and paste, it's all going to be completed for me, right? Now, don't tell anybody else. That's too easy, right? I know, right? <laughs> Be careful. We're going to have too much fun here. All right. 
Now, next, it wants us to calculate a percentile. It says we can use the percentile with a dot INC or the percentile data percent, okay, whichever one you want to type in here. So let's type in equals percentile. And you, you guys see it pulling up here for us? You just click on it. Just click on the formula. All right. And then it wants us to do it for the 16th. So 16th percent would be 0 0.16, 0 0.16. Don't type in 16. That Oh, my bad. Got to type in the data here first. The improvement data. So that's F colon F comma 0 0.16. All right, so now the data is coming from column F. We're going to look at the 16th percentile and hit enter. All right, and we have negative 15. All right, very good. All right, I'm going to let you guys do the 84th. Okay, the lower and upper limits, everybody, the lower and upper limits are talking about the normal curve, okay, normal curve. And as we do that, we want to look at the values of the improvement, the upper limit and the lower limit for the 68th percentile. It says the 68th percentile, everybody, is plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. Okay, so I want the mean plus one standard deviation for the upper and the mean minus one standard deviation for the lower. So click right here. I'm going to do the lower. You do the upper. Okay, equals. Where's the mean? It's right over here. Just click on that cell, right? K9. K9. That's the mean minus the standard deviation. That is K11. Hit enter. And there I have it. Okay, so I've calculated the lower limit. Remember, the limits are the mean minus one standard deviation and the mean plus one standard deviation. I'm going to let you guys do the other one. All right, now we're coming to the interpretation, the fun part. Before we do that, let's go back to our goals and instructions over here. And what does it say? Before data is the measurement of the E. coli per milliliter of water from a well. The after measurement is the same, but made after treatments with an antibiotic agent. If the well water improved, we expect there should be a loss of E. coli after improvement. So the after minus four would be negative, everybody. So if it's negative, it is an improvement, okay? So was ours negative? Yeah, right? Most of them are negative, okay? And in fact, the lower limit here was negative 14.69. The lower percentile here, the 16th percentile was minus 15. So we can see the water is improving, all right? As a check on understanding, complete the following sentence by replacing indicated items with the correct values in the box below. About, this is what you're going to calculate right here. Calculate 0.68 times the total number of wells of values from cell I38. This is I38 right here. All right. So we want to know the number of wells, everybody, the number of wells that are in this 68%, that is plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. That's called the empirical rule. That's the first step. 68% of the data is within plus or minus one standard deviation. So the first thing we want to do is we want to know the number of wells in column F, okay? Now you tell me, how will I count, you guys ready with me here? How will I count the number of wells in column F, all right? I just said it, didn't I? You guys got it with me. Equals count F colon F. Whoops, I got a typo here. F colon F. All right. And it tells me there are 117 wells in column F. Now we want to see how many, right? That's the about, about how many of the wells showed a reduction, all right? Between the upper and lower bound. Where's the upper and lower bound? That's right here, the upper and lower limits right there, okay? So we want to find 68% of I-38. 
I38 is the number of wells in column F. So we're going to click on this. We're going to click equals 0.68 times I38. Just click on it. Hit enter. All right. Now you can see that it's about about 80. All right, so we have now been able to fill in that. We've talked about what the calculation is. We've talked about what the upper and lower bounds are. I've given you guys everything you need to fill in for cell 4B. Cell uh, answer box five says, what if anything do your calculations in part four tell you about the effectiveness of the treatment of the water of the wells? How many wells are expected to see improvement within this range? Justify your answer using the upper and lower bounds found in part four. All right, I'm going to leave that for you guys. And I am out of here for the day, guys. Thank you much. I will see you in the forums. Have a good one.